Hi guys. Right, we have another notice for the world, in particular the Catholic Church. And then as we move through it, you'll uh, see that I'm talking to all the nations, the leaders of the nations. Now to begin from the beginning, letting you know that God, who is already on the earth, the Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Manigal, Lightning Marshall, hates religion. He hates all religion. When he came as Jesus, it was about the way, the truth, and the life. God is love. End of story. Couldn't give a crap about people knowing his name. If a person lives in love and treats their neighbour and their family as themselves in love, that's all that is required. God is good. End of story. So what have we got? We've got the world completely devoured. Let's start at the top. The devil in high places plans to resurrect the Catholic abomination, Pope John Paul II. A hoax bigger than the moon hoax awaiting mankind, devoured by the church that has never belonged to the Lord Jesus Christ. Quoting from 1 Thessalonians 5 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 2 Peter 3 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, of course, what was going on when he was reborn to the earth, January 11th, 1944, was World War II. Hello. If we are to incorrectly assume the infallibility of the Bible, then looking skyward for the fulfillment of a parable to be the guiding light is paramount to the simple truth. God is Jesus, is Christ, and love, just as Jesus simply revealed. And he said all things are revealed in parables. The Hebrew word parable is mashal. Matthew 13, 13, Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing not and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Matthew thirteen thirty four. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. Who? The multitudes. Matthew thirteen thirty five. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So which is true? Coming in the clouds or as a thief in the night? Clearly a parable is to be like. Therefore Jesus must come as a thief and fulfill a genetic prophecy. Isaiah 22, 22. He must be the most royal man alive at some point in the future at the end of biblical time, which is now. Isaiah speaking hundreds of years before the cross, predicting that the genetic key of the house of David has to come at the end of biblical time, these times now. He must be both human and God in the flesh and have the ability to open the secrets of creation that no man can shut and he will shut that no man can open. As the word was made flesh, he was truly God and truly man. Isaiah twenty-two twenty-two, quoting, And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. Verse 23, And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, 
and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. So what are we talking about? We are talking about the glory of this flesh body, which is the throne of the father within the father's house, which is where he is right now upon the earth. All one has to do is find the true king and lord, the genetic king of Israel's house of David that must logically be taken over by the devil, as is the Catholic Church, a divine promise that must be fulfilled. The genetic line cannot be the Catholic Church since Peter was told not to go to the Gentiles. Rome was then the most dreadful, cruel, Gentile nation that had ever existed. The ten tribes of Israel were scattered to Europe by the words delivered to the king of Nineveh by Jonas. The Solomon-inspired ten northern tribes of Israel were all dreadful monsters that slew their neighbours, killing the males and keeping the women and girls who were still virgins for themselves. Ask yourself, do these commands in those texts Sound like Jesus was their God? Those commands were demonic, to say the least. And since Jesus said God is love and the Father and I are one, no love has ever flowed from the Torah. The Jews of today are no more Jews than Jesus was. He was an Essene. Today the Jews who proclaim to be Jews by subterfuge of a Talmud ideology springing out of Babylon, they speak of themselves as being genetic offspring of the Jews at the time of Jesus. But genetically, they are Talmud preaching Khazar that emerged out of southern Russia after 800 AD, adopting Judaism and as such there are none that are Jews at all. If they were, it was Jesus they hated because he was an Essene. The Old Testament is a bastardization of the original Essene books as per the corrupted Dead Sea Scrolls. As said, the Israelite was commanded by the Old Testament to kill and if one was to pick up sticks on a Sabbath, Moses was told by the Lord to stone the man to death. Jesus, on the other hand, healed on the Sabbath. In the King James Version 1611, Search the word Sabbath and it is reduced to a small s. Quoting from Numbers 15.35, And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. The God and Lord of the Old Testament for the most part were demonic. On this basis, if God is love and Jesus was and is God in the flesh, Therefore, at what point was Jesus saying God was not love and kills or commands the tribes of Israel to murder and keep the virgins for themselves? The dispersal of the ten tribes by the king of Nineveh scattered them to Europe, the lost sheep, which had been consumed by the devil long before the Gentile church was formed in Rome. Matthew 10 verses 5 and 6, quoting, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, do not go to Rome. Paul was not an apostle. He came along 15 years after the cross. As far as the forgiveness of sins go, go into the closet and pray. It means a person who prays privately, his prayer is heard by God, who is Jesus, and he grants forgiveness by simply asking in my name, that is the name of Jesus. Today, it's the name of Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, who is Jesus Christ. 
If therefore a man, regardless of even knowing the name, let alone the person of Jesus, if he is driven by his own righteousness out of a sense of love, he has love within him and so has God within him. Matthew 6.6, 6, quoting, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So what happened? Jesus warned his own, the twelve apostles, that the devil would come after him. And so Paul, the devil, did come 15 years after the cross. And although he did not ever meet Jesus, Paul contradicted all that Jesus taught to those who belonged to Jesus, the original 12. And so the corruption set in, quoting from Jude 1, 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Riding on the Old Testament killer and that Lord was perpetuated in the church of Rome where Peter was told not to to go. The ten tribes were dominated by Solomon. His first act as king by subterfuge murdered his brother Adoniah, originally chosen by David. However, Solomon's mother Bathsheba, she an adulteress, deceived David, fearing she and Solomon would be murdered for their sin. Solomon had married 700 wives and 300 concubines from the Ammonite and Moabite and other tribes, erected temples to his wives' gods. They were the offspring, the Ammonite and the Moabite, were the offspring by incest of Lot out of Sodom with his two daughters. And so Solomon received 666 talents of gold per annum. It was not solely Solomon who mixed his genetics with these forbidden tribes. So did all of the men who under instructions murdered tribes and took the versions for themselves. Does this sound like Jesus? Of course it doesn't. The Bible is not the infallible word of God because of these points which were drawn and assembled from works the Jews had orchestrated influencing the church by infiltrating and posing as Catholics. The Christ would not recommend anybody praying to the Holy Spirit within any of the churches. Thus far, you have all been listening to a lying spirit that has led you astray and you have led the many along the broad road to destruction. Now, this particular video is aimed at the Holy Family Monastery in New York, brothers Peter and Michael Diamond. The Christ, having watched many of your videos, the Shroud of Turin, there's a, a point missed. And that is that there were two pieces of cloth stitched together meticulously. The length is 171 inches by 43 inches, the larger being 171 by 39.5 inches, and the smaller is 171 by 3.5 inches. Multiply the 171 by 39.5 inches, it equals 6754.5 square inches. In the Hebrew concordance of the King James 1611, James Strong's concordance, 
The number 6754 means ghost, resemblance, like, likeness. It's the Hebrew word teslam. The smaller area is the number 598.5. And that number is an Ammonite S, the wife of Solomon. Quoting from 1 Kings 14.21. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there, and his mother's name, Naamah, an Ammonite Tess. 4985. Therefore, the royal descent to the former Queen Elizabeth II, genealogists claim to be descended from Solomon, is via a sodomite. The true king descends from Jesse. Quoting Isaiah 11.10, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. That is the invitation now, for this time, in the second incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ, back as the Father. The Gentiles are therefore the Catholic Church. Genetically, Christ was born into Sydney, Australia, January 11th, 1944, written 1 1944 The sunrise to sunset on that day was 855 minutes, with the moonrise 33 minutes later, for a total of 888 minutes. The Greek gematria for the name Jesus is 888. The Star of Bethlehem occurred a second time on that date. Nobody talks about it. The Star of Bethlehem on his Jesus' birth date occurred on June the 17th, 2 BC. It was the alignment between Venus with Jupiter. The sunrise to sunset was 855 minutes with the moonrise 33 minutes later for a total of 888 minutes being Jesus in Greek gematria. The Christ was 8,880 days old when his first daughter Tracy Lee was born on May the 4th, 1968 in Port Alberni, BC, Canada. The sunrise to moonrise for the day was 888 minutes. She had been conceived 280 days earlier on July 29, 1967, when Jupiter, which is 88,800 miles wide, was overhead for 888 minutes. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Are you beginning to get the picture? Matthew 1.23 has a value of 8,000 880. What does it say? Quoting, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, is God with us. Now the Christ's illegitimate brother was born on February the 25th, 1935, now deceased. He was 8.88 years older than the Christ. The Christ married his first wife. He was aged 1162.6 weeks at the time. The altar to the Lord mentioned in Isaiah Chapter 19, verses 19 to 20, is the Great Pyramid at Giza. It has a king's chamber and an antechamber. The antechamber 
measures 116.26 pyramid inches wide. That's 116.26, the same number, 11626. The Christ's second daughter, Nicole, was born on November the 2nd in 1977. The Christ married his third wife, Michelle Nye, born March the 19th, 1946. He is 1162.6 days older than Michelle is. And her daughter, Rhiannon, is 11.626 years younger than her stepsister, Tracy. While Nicole is 777 days or 2.127 years older than Rhiannon. Michelle was 32.75 years old when she gave birth to Rhiannon. The word city is found in the 1611 King James Version within 777 verses. The two numbers, therefore, 2127 in Hebrew is Zia, the second 3275 is Yakan. These are found only once in the Old Testament. Solitary words then what are the odds that they would be found in the same verse? Further, what are the odds that these numbers for mother and daughter are found side by side in the same verse? Figure it out. It's more than 700,000 words in the entire Bible. You talk about the atoms in the universe and the probability of this and that. Well, start doing your math here. These numbers, 3275 and 2127, link Michelle, born March 19th, 1946, and her daughter Rhiannon, 20th of December, 1979. Tracy, 11.626 years before, and Nicole, 2.127 years, as well as 1162.6 days between Michelle and the Christ. And he, 11.62.6 weeks old when he married his first wife, Lucifer's Choice. A harlot from Lisco, New South Wales, Australia. These numbers are the key of the house of David, laid upon the Christ's shoulders, mentioned by Isaiah in 2222, thousands of years ago. There are seven names in 1 Chronicles 5.13. These total 31106. Divide by 7 to find an average, 4443.71. The word God is found, 714, seven, sorry, 4443.714. The word God is found in the KGV, KG, I feel like saying KGV, <laughs> KJV. 4,443 occasions in 3,877 verses. The 714 is Isaiah 714, quoting, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. First Chronicles 513, And their children of the house of their fathers were Michael and Meshulam and Sheba and Uriah and Yakan and Zia and Heber seven. The sign that Isaiah said that the Lord himself would give is this very sign that we're talking about now. He's been doing it for decades. If you're hearing this for the first time, then this is a sign to you that the Lord himself is giving you. The Great Pyramid has within its measurements, based upon the earth itself, and moreover, identifies the re place of rebirth of Jesus and the date precisely. For example, there are 202 masonry layers, each represent a solar eclipse. 
To measure locations, the moon passes the 25 degree latitude either north or south of the equator. On the date of the birth of Christ, on January 11, 1944, at 2.22 a.m., it was a full moon. It was followed by a solar eclipse on January 25, 1944. Measuring from the 25 degree north latitude, we draw an arc of 8,888.8 miles. The last solar eclipse occurred November the 14th in 2012. Along the 25 degree latitude south, we draw an arc 942 miles long. Where these two cross is the precise location of the birth of the Christ at 105 Rothschild Avenue, Rosebury, Sydney, Australia. Australia being the biblical Ephraim and Ephraim is Hebrew for Bethlehem. Y 888.8 and 942. The Greek gematria for Jesus is 888 and there are 942 verses in the KGV 1611 with the name Jesus in them. When Lieutenant Cook was sailing from Antarctica after being in Tahiti to observe the transition of Venus on June the, June the 3rd 1769, he opened secret orders from the English Admiralty to sail south in search for an alternative to Australia. The French astronomer Messier recorded the Great Comet on August the 8th, 1769. Twenty-two days later, August the 30th, 1769. <laughs> Lieutenant Cook noted in the ship's log the same comet. Add 88,888 days to that date. It was January the 11th, 2013. Almost two months ago. And the Christ's 69th birthday. He was 25,200 days old. This is also 70 Hebrew years of 360 days. Now, when we add the 88,888 days to August the 22nd, when Messier first sighted the comet in France, it was the Mayan calendar crossing of the Milky Way galaxy equator, the 20th of December, 21st of December, no, 20th of December, 2012, just gone by. The precise location of his rebirth is 105 Rothschild Avenue, Rosebury, Sydney, Australia. Cook continued to New Zealand, spending six months measuring, finding it to be 888 miles between latitudes. From this location of his rebirth, the distance to the South Pole is 3,875 miles. This number is comforter. Quoting John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. 3875. That he may abide with you forever. Meaning now. Because he's back here as the Father. Quoting John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost... whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay, so it's Jesus speaking then, foretelling of himself, because he and the Father are one. At the end, it will be the Father who is the comforter, who will be teaching all things and bringing all things to remembrance. Who was he talking to? The few. His disciples. From then. John 15, 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Hello. The Comforter, Spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, talking of himself, Jesus Christ, back then. John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. 
For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Are you getting it? If he doesn't go, he can't get back. How? Through reincarnation as the Holy Ghost, the resurrected, risen Lord, the Holy Ghost, which was the soul of the Father inside the young body of Jesus. He ascended 49 days after the crucifixion so that he could come back to be born again, meaning through the womb of his mother this time, Daphne Golightly, the most royal woman on the planet. Where the Christ was born was St. Margaret's Catholic Maternity Hospital. It is located 3,877 miles to the South Pole. The word God is found in the 1611 King James Version within 3,877 verses on 4,443 occasions. Christ built two homes in Canada where his children were born. And these are 444.3 kilometres apart. Measuring the Great Pyramid from the Great Step through the 116.26 pyramid inch antechamber to the wall of the King's Chamber, add the distance to the coffer, add the height of the wall, multiply by a, a lunation of the moon, which is 29.53052 days, it works out to be 31,101, 31101. And that is the number of verses of the Bible, King James 1611, 31101 verses. Then divide by seven equals 4443, and you get God. So, the answer lay in the concordance of the 1611 KJV only, not the Bible as its Old Testament is dominated by the Jewish Talmud Torah. It's in the numbers of words in the Hebrew. There are 8,674 in the concordance and the Greek, there are 5,624 in the Greek concordance. The Greek being 3,050, that is 3,050 less than the Hebrew. That number 3,050 is Yah, J-A-H, Yah, the name of God, found in only one verse. The number of words 8,674 in the Hebrew concordance counted as years if 8.674 years is 3168 days, 3168 days. And that number in Greek, or rather is the Greek gematria for the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord 800 plus Jesus 888 plus 1480 for Christ totals 3168, the key of the house. Of David. David, English gematria letters, when multiplied by each other, D equals 4 times 1 times 22 times 1 times 4 equals 3168, Lord Jesus Christ. In 2008, the Christ and his wife took the cures for AIDS, malaria, BD, diabetes 2, cancer, etc. to Papua New Guinea, then again in 2010 to Fiji, to each nation we went twice, establishing four clinics, two in each nation. Now there have been seven attempts upon his life, all to no effect, including the consuming of cyanide that was placed in a tin of salmon by a Mossad agent who, when he couldn't kill him, much to his astonishment and horror, out of his own mouth said, you really are the Christ. To which you are replied. I was just going to say that. <laughs> who the fuck did you think I was? <laughs> <sighs> the nicest possible way. <laughs> now, that brings us to Fatima. 
There's not one photo of Mary or the sun changing shape or descending. Yet there are many photographs of people looking up into the sky. Is it not reasonable to assume that the camera would have been pointed skyward rather than at the people looking up at what? Now the first description of Mary, or rather it was many descriptions of Mary. Anyway, this is, this is the description of Mary by the children and others who were there. She was actually about three and a half feet high, dressed all in white, and she had a skirt on with some uh, red and gold thread through it and all the rest of it. Her lips did not move, and her eyes were black. Now, according to the Christ, his mother is tall, olive skin of English features, full lips, fine features, and very, very, very blue eyes. The messages given at Fatima suggesting God would cause wars to destroy nations and millions of people, then have the three million Jews in Europe suddenly swell to six million, exterminated, and then the no November 2nd, 1917 Balfour Agreement giving Palestine to the Jews as a refuge before the alleged Holocaust took place. Hitler stated correctly that if the Jews were not stopped, they would kill all life and leave the world a lifeless sphere floating in the ether of space. He identified that the enemy of all mankind was Judaism, which was behind Marxism, commonly known today as Zionism. There is no way that Christ would use war to punish people. The devil does that. What is clear, the apparition was not Mary. It is similar to the apparition that appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus, and that was Lucifer. The overall effect is to use the church as a focal point to be destroyed. When the sky will reveal what is currently being covered up by the chemtrails over Europe. There are planets hovering above the sky, each day moving closer to the earth that will be seen and will terrify the earth as a collision and end of all life will be the greatest challenge to all religions and indeed the world will change and Rome will be converted and the Vatican destroyed. Now, when the Christ was two, four, two, four days old, it was August the 31st in 1950. He was in the schoolyard, Catholic convent, St. Bernard's, when two older boys were talking and they were overheard by the Christ. One said Jesus was a Sadducee and the other said no, he was a Pharisee. Erupting into anger, the Christ ran between them, screaming that Jesus was an Essene. At that moment, he was taken back in time to the outskirts of what was later Nazareth, sitting on the steps of a synagogue, old worn steps, unlike the perfection of buildings in Egypt. To his left, an arched timber door, rough splintered, dark brown with iron hinges. Mary was walking down a slight inclined and called, Jesus, Jesus, come. Christ ran to her side. He thought how tired he was, walking for days in the hot sun. She was wearing black, tall and slim, long strides. Christ was then on her left. Mary said, Jesus, I have something to tell you. If the Jews find out we are Essene, they will kill us. As she spoke, Christ turned, looking back. Joseph was by then walking down the incline, a huge man, full bushy grey beard, hair pulled back. His arms were on the shoulders of two rabbis on either side. Smaller men, also full beards, dressed in black. 
Joseph was wearing a grey full-length garment. On the left side, a darker grey strip to the hem, bordered by two thin lines on either side, black or red. Christ further relates, The vision then changed inexplicably, inexplicably. No memory of the schoolyard whatsoever. We were in a small, very roughly constructed room, a lattice window above my height. It was night, a partial moon casting a shadow as the two upright sticks crossed by three horizontal kept the brown curtains from fluttering outside the window. Mary and Joseph were wearing black robes. Mother said, we are going to see the high priest, do not follow us. Then they exited out the door, away to the left. I opened the door slightly ajar. As they crept away, they were keeping to the shadows, a dusty street to the corner some 30 feet or so, a short distance then out of sight, turned to the right, after which I was back in the schoolyard. Continuing his experience, that day, quoting, walking home from school, I crossed the tram line, stopped near the overhead railway bridge, looked up to heaven and said, God, I know you can't be here for some reason, and you must have left proof of yourself in creation. So if you like, tell me, and I will tell the world. There are other things that as a small child, two, four, two, four days old, is just a little over six years. Christ said, I often wondered why the Pope did not stop the war. At that time, there were still echoes of World War II. I thought, if the Pope did not bless everyone going to war, nobody would go. The logic of a small child. When asked, how old were you when they read the Bible, the Christ replied, I've never read it. You've never read it? No. My wife in Canada said to me in 1991 that if I read it, I would believe it is the word of God. I said to her, if I read it, I will destroy it. Accepting her challenge, I purchased a KJV 1611 being the oldest translation the church has used. Unaware there were hundreds of Bibles and 36,000 different Christian denominations. He had other books that he'd purchased as well and they showed him that the Jewish ideology was found in a book about the Talmud. He'd always, even before buying these books, been particularly aggravated by the term certain man a term that Jews used to avoid saying and so a term the Jews used to avoid saying Jesus and so in the course of my studies I found the word in the Talmud abominations. I traced how many verses contained the word certain at the same time. I marked every Lord and God in red marker and blue. The word certain appeared in 193 verses Reading them, I typed out each verse, printed and arranged them on a large sheet of plywood, nine feet by four feet, an oversized sheet. The verse ran like a, verses ran like a story, ending with, certain men crept in unawares. The first verse was Genesis 28, 11, and then ending in Jude. Quoting from Jude, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That night after contemplating the discovery, it was clear these verses were a message for me. Re-examining what I had found, I began cross-checking the notes in the margins. One verse led to another, and the following verse, written in red, which was the words of Jesus, that Bible recorded Jesus' words in red, it said the following, quote, 
My son, his mother and I are well pleased with you and a place has been reserved for you in paradise from the beginning. I pondered the message and went into the bedroom where Pauline was sleeping, woke her and as she had told me she was an expert on the Bible, asked if she was familiar with it. Pauline read it, thought for a moment and said she was not familiar with it. She handed it back to me and I read it aloud. Then she took it again and read it. I took it again, read it aloud. She took it back, read it and handed it back. I looked at it again and then it vanished. Did you change the page? She said, no. I got into bed. It was late, perhaps 2 a.m. We lay there in the dark, no moonlight, as we continued discussing what we saw and how it vanished. I noticed a small dot of light at ceiling height to my left. It was growing larger. It was a small pink light. I pointed it out to Pauline and she asked, what is it? Second by second it grew. The first light was being pushed forward by another larger light behind it, then a larger behind that and then another growing in size to fill the room from what to fill the wall from one side of the room to the other it was similar to the constellation m42 in the belt of orion but not smooth more like it had been cut with a knife it then vanished having grown having grown into about 30 layers by the end beautiful and pink and white dove shaped pauline dark pauline asked what is it I seemed to recognise it. I said it was the Holy Spirit. From that moment on, I wholeheartedly launched into the project. I knew I had the answer. It was not in what the Bible actually said. Since the man-made book was not inspired by men of honour, it was a tool of mass deception, a work of the devil in man to create a holy work to ensnare the masses. As I began to dissect the work, I researched and found what was called the Green Bible. It had concordance numbers, the English and Hebrew in the Old Testament and English and Greek in the New. I needed to know the precise meaning of each word and prompted me to buy the 1830s, James, James Strong's exhaustive concordance of the 1611 KGV Bible. It's a huge book. I began scanning each word, then in no time reached the number 378. And that was the answer. Allowing for man's efforts to stop Christ, the Talmud Protocols of Zion, number 14, quote, we shall forbid Christ. In the book version of Strong's Concordance on page 11, the 26th line is the number 378. And at Pleru from 303 and 4137, meaning to complete by implication to occupy, supply, to accomplish by coincidence or obedience. Fill up, fulfill, occupy, supply. By the way, it's not on the uh, internet. When you go to the Blue Bible, they've changed it. And they have God will fulfill, don't they, rather than hmm. coincidence? It says fulfill. fulfill. Say God will. Right. So okay. take out coincidence, that's the point. Yes. Now, there are 8,674 words in the Hebrew and 5,624 words in the Greek. Divide the 8,674 by 5,624 and then multiply by 378 and you get 582.99, yada, yada, yada. So it gave the Christ 582 and 583. The 582 in Hebrew is Enoah, a mortal differing from 120, Adam. Certain, chap, certain mortal, compare 376. So now we have certain and man. So going to 376, it means ish, a certain Champion, high degree, mighty man, compare 802. This led to the covenant word Brit combined with Ish 
is Brit covenant at ish, meaning covenant with a righteous man. Measuring the United Kingdom on a map at the library, then converting it to a pyramid, the math is height 599.95 miles multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi divided by 4 equals a pyramid width of 942.399 miles then squared equals 888.166 square miles as a pyramid footprint later it was 942.477 and then later 599.910696 equals a footprint of 888,000 square miles. Later with Magellan software accurate to within 3 metres, the limit is the bitmaps when zooming in to settle on as close as I could for the island being 942.808 base width between latitudes of 599.91 plus high, then times 2, multiply by pi, divide by 4 for the footprint, 888,000 no, 888, square miles. The throne of David is the United Kingdom, 888 being Jesus in Greek to Matria, and 942 being the number of verses in the 1611 KJV with the word, the name Jesus in them. Later I realised as my first wife was, so my second wife, Pauline, was yet another devil in the flesh. So I changed tactics, using her like a negative Geiger counter. Ask the Delphi, the Delphic Oracle, incarnate a question, fawning ignorance, and she would respond, attempting to throw me off the scent. I had thought the appearance of the Holy Spirit was enough to convince her. But no. Going back to the day of the vision in the schoolyard, midday, August the 31st, 1950, Sydney, Australia. The date in Nazareth when the vision was occurring was February the 5th in the year 6 AD. The local time as the second part of the vision in the darkened room was occurring at 2300 hours and Julian Day 1723285.275 UTC, UTC time of 2100 hours. The star directly overhead was YBS 4032. It rose at 14.32 and set at 6.58 for a total of 926 minutes. 15.32. 15.32, sorry. And the moon was over Spica in Virgo at 0.8888% fall. 4032 in Greek means to conceal all around, entirely hide, keep secret. 926 in Hebrew means to tremble inwardly, hasten, alarmed, agitated, speedily. And in Greek it means burdensome. 4032 in Hebrew means a sense of fear to turn aside from the road for lodging or other purposes, to be as a guest assembled, to be a stranger, gather together, stand in awe. So that is describing exactly the scene that was happening. Mother and father, fear and trembling, agitated, keeping to the shadows, to go to an assembly to announce that the Lamb is now in Nazareth. Saturn was directly overhead for 802 minutes to rise at 17.46 and set at 7.08. 8.02 in Hebrew is female, woman and or man. To place jointly to consent to the covenant, which is exactly what I just said to you. Mother and father going to the priesthood, assembled together to announce the sacrificial lamb, the covenant, is here. Now the sunrise at 6.36 and set, it rose at 6.36 and set at 17.20 for a rise of 644 minutes, which is the Greek gematria for Emmanuel, God with us. 
and 644 in the Greek concordance is in the shadows, denoting separation, also departure and completion, darkness in the shadows or the shade. And that's exactly what they were doing, hiding in the shadows out of the moonlight so that they wouldn't be seen. Alpha Virgo in Spica, obscured by the moon, rises at 20.32, setting at 8.26, a total of 714 minutes, which is Isaiah 7.14, Emmanuel prophecy once again. On the same date of February the 5th, 6 AD, in Sydney, so we've gone from Jerusalem, on the date that the vision was occurring, where he's taken back in time, what was happening on Sydney in that day, where the, the vision was ex being experienced on August 31st, 1915, the sun <laughs> rise was 523 and set at 1905 for 822 minutes. 822 in Hebrew is a latticed window. Lattice which was the description of the small dark room they were in with the curtain being held by the lattice. You should mention that uh, 2424 days old. Yes, it's uh, Jesus. If we take that from the birth in uh, June 17th, 2 BC, and we had 2424 days arrives at. February the 5th, 6th, Which is Michelle's son's birthday. Mason. Mason. Uh -huh. And 2424 is the listing number for Jesus in the Greek concordance. It's the number 2424 word listed in the Greek concordance. So you got Jesus, Jesus. Well, I'm okay. <laughs> All right. Now, the value of Isaiah 714, this is the Emmanuel again, in English Dramatria is 1064 and means primogeniture from 1062, meaning firstborn. And 1064 in Greek means from the womb with child. Go. Oh. Now, Judges 528. Why are we going there? That's because that's where the word lattice is also found. Only once. Only once. It is. Now, 528, the number of the verse, means to meet a way in Greek and denotes separation, cessation, completion, reversal. 5280 is the number of feet in a mile and means in Greek one's own memory to remember, to remind quietly, which is exactly what the vision was all about. It was the Lord Jesus Christ's own memory. He was taken back to remind him. It is also the gematria for the last verse in the 1611 KGV Bible. It's the English gematria, value of 528. Revelation 22:21, quoting, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now when you multiply by 6, it equals 3168, which is the gematria Greek for Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is where I've come in. <laughs> this is your bit. <laughs> this is my bit. Hold on. <laughs> Ooh, this could be scary. <laughs> it could but be. Get a sack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on to your hats, guys. <laughs> but, no man can comprehend the mind of God. If he could then the world would not be in the mess it is now. God cannot be contained between the covers of a book put together by mere men, evil ones at that. God is the book. A man once and back again, just as he promised, the thief in the night. And nobody knows when a thief will come. Only after the advent does the owner of the house learn of the visitation. So, a 
baby is born, God in the flesh, twice. Once in the north, and then again, this time, in the south. An individual only has to read the book of Isaiah to understand it is about the first and second coming of God. First time as the incarnate son and heir of the vineyard, murdered by the priesthood, the evil angels. Then to return at the end of the age as the owner, lord and master of the vineyard, this time to deal with the evil priests who put him to death as the son. The judgment which takes place upon the earth at the consummation of the age now. The eviction of all evil off the earth as recorded by Enoch, the first prophet who recorded the script. The Lord's Prayer is about the kingdom of God coming to the earth where Almighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is in residence as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Emmanuel, God with us, whose name, new name of the Revelation 3.12, and the name written that only he would know in the Revelation 19.12 is Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall. If only he would know it, foretelling of when he's back again and only he would know, nobody else knows the name. Not even Yahweh, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Yehoah, Jesus, Jesus. It's not any of those. A name written, a new name, that only he would know. And so he has to tell and announce to the world, which we'll get to in just a minute. Okay. Now, the name Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall has an English gematria of 312, the same as the verse number where it says, my new name. 312, Revelation. In Greek, in the concordance, the number 312 is an angel low, an angel low, and means to announce in detail, rehearse, report, show, speak, tell from 303 and 32. 303 means repetition, intensity, and 32 is a messenger, especially an angel, by implication a pastor, angel, messenger. I feel like I want to say here, are you reading my lips? It's the name written that only he would know, the new name that he has to announce. Rehearse, repeat, speak, tell. To who? You. Nineteen twelve. The verse where it says, He will have a name written that only he will know. That is the year that the Christ's mother, Daphne Golightly, was born. The mother Again, of God, Daphne Golightly, born, now wait for it, October 11th, 1912. That would be 10, 11, 12 in Revelation 19. And guess what? His father was born in 1909. So what have we got? We've got Revelation 1909, 19. 10, 1911, 1912, and 1913. What does it do? Well, when you add them all together, actually, I'll go back to 1912. 1912 means in Greek to be heavy to be severe towards, to overcharge from 1909, which is the birth year of his father, whose name was Reginald 
Albert Michael Marshall and 916. 1909 means superimposition of time, place and order because of, on behalf of, the space of throughout. 916 means in Greek to weigh down, burden, charge, heavy, press from 926 which means grave, grievous, heavy, weightier. He never wanted the job. It has been a grievous burden. Why? Because mankind has been devoured by the enemy of your soul, the Jews, who call themselves Jews and are not and want to kill you. They have been killing you for a very long time. They have been poisoning your children. They have been creating every war. They are the terrorists blowing up not only Palestinians, but Syrians, Libyans, the Sudanese, the Malis, everywhere on the planet. They were behind 9-11. They are the terrorists. Their father is the devil. And as Jesus, he condemned them before he went to the cross. And they know it. Brian, learn to go lightly, marshal the name, which is the word of God. Look at the Revelation 19.13. Talks about in 19.12, the name written that only he would know and then in 1913 it qualifies what name at it it is capital t for the capital w for word of god capital g so the word of god is not a book it is the name of the man once again brian leonard go lightly marshall just as he was as jesus christ yahshua yahushua whatever you want to call him Today, it is Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Okay, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall has a Greek gematria value of 1056. And in the Greek concordance, 1056 is Galilee. Hello. Oh, here we go. 6561 is the English gematria total for those verses that I was talking from 1909 through to and including Revelation 1913. 16, sorry, 65, 6, 1. So those verses contain the birth dates of the Christ's father and mother, the clues of his unknown identity, being his name written that only he would know, and that the name is the word of God, and the grievous burden, the weight upon himself, being who he is, that is God in the flesh, born into this hell, covering paradise with a devoured, depraved, ignorant, arrogant world of wicked and wanted men and women too fucked in the head to recognise the truth when he is speaking to them. Those verses, 6561, in Hebrew is to deliver, break off, Redeem, rend, tear in pieces. In Greek, it describes what? 656 is out of the synagogue, excommunicated. And here I have got my signature, Greek 310. Give me a hello. Is there anybody out there? Jesus' famous last words. Okay. We're going to all capitals now because this is really where I get rammed up. The ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, Almighty God, Brian Lenny Go Lightly Marshall, is to set the captives free. Isaiah. 61, wasn't it? Right. Set the captives free. Open the prison gates. Deliver the people of the earth. From what? 
the Jews that call themselves Jews and are not, that have been in control of the temple, which is all of the earth, including the Catholic Church. No one has escaped the deception by the Jews who are of their father, the devil. The most holy family monastery in New York is not the true church of Jesus Christ. No church on earth is. Only the few that gather in this household of God and the few out there that know his name and recognize him. They know who they are. Mary does not mediate between man and the son that she gave birth to. She does not appear in the sky as an apparition, a three, hundred and, a three and a half foot tall girl, 12 to 15 years of age, wearing white and with black eyes, speaking in a tiny voice without moving her lips, emanating the sound of buzzing bees. Hello! You have been deluded by Lucifer, who can appear as anything it wants to, and did so to the false apostle, Paul, who was a devil, that Jesus warned his 12 disciples would come after him, and whose teachings are the foundation of the Church of Rome. Totally antichrist. There is no true Catholic Church. Peter was told not to go to Rome. How many skulls in the catacombs underneath? One of them's Martha's, mine. The Immaculate Heart of Mary is another con by Lucifer. Does it sound like Jesus? That he would require penance from small children to do on behalf of idiot adults so that they, the small children, would feel compelled to flagellate themselves and wear a belt so tight around their waist that they are in pain? Fatima and the Immaculate Heart of Mary Con is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, which is the soul of Jesus worn over his flesh body now in this incarnation, which gives him immortality on the earth along with his saints who recognize him as their shepherd, teacher and Lord Almighty God, Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall. There is no forgiveness for sinning against the Holy Ghost. He is the Holy Ghost. There's no pardon for that. The rapture is a false doctrine invented by evil men to get you to do nothing. Thinking about heaven as a floating spirit well, they, the Jews, ravage and kill the innocents in the land of Palestine and beyond. They, the people of Palestine and Syria, are the holy people, and the lump of dirt called Israel is and always will be Palestine. So here's where it gets really gnarly. Speaking to you leaders. For God's sake, Russia and Iran go into Palestine and set them free. Go to the aid of the holy people of Syria. God's man is Bashir al-Assad. And the enemy of mankind is the Zionist Jew who calls himself a Jew and is not. Netanyahu is a devil. So is Obama. Go in and occupy. Send in a million men and just overrun the place. Now notice to the Muslim world. Allah is what God does. It is not his name. It's like the CEO of a company. It's his job description. His name is Yahweh. Lord Jesus Christ, known today as Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. You have been deceived into denying that God came in the flesh. He was known as Jesus before he went to the cross and he did go to the cross. You have been spun fantasies. 
It was him that was crucified for the life of you. He was known as Jesus, son of Mary. He's back again now. He has been communicating with you for years and you are too deceived by the jinn who has constructed the book you read called the Koran. I did read one half page of it. And? Bullshit. <laughs> so if so, you don't recognise the truth when he is talking to you. For all religions, take note. The parable of the fall of mankind was the fault of Adam, not Eve. The one simple instruction to Adam was to not touch one tree in the garden when he had everything he would need or want. Think of it as a test. He could not obey for one hour one simple do not touch rule. Eve was taken from Adam's side after God gave the commandment to Adam, that one simple rule. Eve is innocent of the fall of man. Adam was by her side when the adversary came into beguile her naive mind. Adam should have right then grabbed that fig and cast it out of the garden and then commanded the adversary to get away from them and in so doing, he would have saved Eve from the pain of experiencing the death of her children unto this day. How many Rachels are weeping in Baca, the valley of weeping in Palestine today? Rachel's children are being slaughtered by the Jew who is of their father, the devil, the seed of Cain, while the world's leaders do nothing but give off politically correct gas smelling of bullshit. You leaders of the world, I'm talking to you, your hell will be what you have allowed to go on multiplied against you 1,000-fold. Look at this and weep. Jamin, 2002. October 2012. Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall is the resurrected, returned Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh in the flesh. He is the image in the shroud of Turin. Protocol number 14. Protocols of Zion. Really simple. We shall forbid Christ. However, it's the meek who inherit the earth. The King of Judah, Yahweh, Brian, Leonard, Go Lightly, Marshall. When did the coin have to come? 28th of October, 2011.